So let's start with the caucus meeting on Tuesday. Why did you miss that caucus meeting? Um, well, I guess the first thing is, um, you know, I did have engagements on the day um, and uh, I was only advised of that caucus meeting on Monday night. Uh, and when I was advised of it, I was actually traveling down to Hamilton from Auckland because I had engagements in, in Auckland. And when I got to Hamilton, I actually had more engagements and meetings. Uh, at night, when I did see the text message from um, the web, Duncan Webb, um, uh, there were a range of messages. Initially, there were a couple of times proposed, but then they had already agreed to a time. Um, and I did go back to them and said, look, uh, tomorrow, or, or as in on Tuesday, uh, is a very short notice uh, because I already have engagements in place. Uh, and I gave him a, a very genuine example that um, there was a, a select committee coming there on Tuesday for three waters, and somebody had, another MP had asked me to swap um, so that they didn't have to come to Hamilton and I could do the select committee. Mm -hmm. And it was in my electorate, and I said, look, I genuinely can't because I have uh, constituent engagements already. Uh, one of them was a media interview that had already been set up many, many weeks ago, uh, just a generic you know, profile sort of thing. And another one was with uh, various ethnic communities um, just to talk about uh, their stories and how we can sort of bring those good stories out, out into the media. Um, so all of that was already organized and it was very difficult to cancel it last minute as well. Do you think you should have prioritized this meeting? Uh, well, I guess, you know, it's a bit of both though, right? Like I have to continue the work um, that I have committed myself to. Uh, and, you know, whether that is the markets that I went to, the Frankton markets that I often go in the weekend, whether it was a constituent clinic I had at 9 o'clock, 7 to 9 p.m. at an after-hours pharmacy or another constituent clinic at, at a school. So I was getting on with my work as usual. And I did um, say that, you know, a, another time in a few days' time would be better. A bit more notice would be great. I also asked for a support person. Uh, and I was obviously, you know, told that a third party can't come in. Uh, so it has to be just me. Um, but the meeting would be next day. And then I was given, given a window, a very firm window. It'll be between 12 and 3. And if you don't come back to us, we will, we will do the meeting anyway. So I said, you know, maybe closer to three, but it will be very hard for me to squeeze that time. Uh, and I can prove that, you know, I was in the office. There were lots of community leaders there, and we talked about the things that we were going to talk about anyway. The Prime Minister says that she and other Labour MPs have tried to reach out to you. They've tried to contact you about the suspension and since... You were suspended. Why have you not taken their calls? Uh, so one thing, as I said, was, you know, at that very moment, I was engaged in community involvement as well. But in addition to that, you know, I was made aware that um, there had already been a meeting, uh, a full caucus meeting, minus one, uh, the night before, uh, which I wasn't invited to, I wasn't made aware of. Uh, and, and it was concerning because I was still a member of the Labour caucus on Monday night uh, when that meeting took place between 8pm and 9pm. Uh, but it's even more concerning that, you know, that meeting, uh, first there were a, a chat group organised on Sunday, uh, and then on Monday morning the Prime Minister called the meeting uh, for the whole caucus except me on that chat group. Uh, and then, uh, you know, when asked at the media stand-up um, during the afternoon about whether there would be a predetermined process, you know, whether um, the caucus has already made up their mind, the Prime Minister was very clear that that wasn't the case, despite knowing that she had called a meeting, which was going to happen that night, where everyone was invited except me. Uh, so when I found out about it on Monday night, um, you know, that sort of didn't help uh, in me. That was part of confident. the reason that you didn't go to the caucus meeting? No, I wouldn't it? say that. And, you know, I was very clear, as I said, because um, I found out about that after uh, the Chief Whip had messaged me. And I can easily show you the messages between me and the Chief Whip saying, these are my community engagements, not able to do it. But it didn't help the confidence uh, in the process. Why do you believe that the Labour Party has suspended you? Well, I think in their mind, you know, what the, or, the, or the thing that they're saying out in the media uh, is that it's about, uh, you know, making sure that um, uh, a person who's spoken uh, in their mind out, outside the caucus rules uh, should be um, silenced. Uh, in my uh, sort of view, uh, which I hold, uh, you know, to be true, uh, is that, um, you know, there is something... Uh, very big going on here, uh, and there is a cover-up. And, and basically what's happened is for one and a half years, you know, I've been trying to seek justice. I've been raising concerns uh, in every office, and uh, nobody's uh, tried to help me. Uh, and now when I've spoken about it out in, in the public, because there was no other resort left, uh, I'm now being completely silent uh, and being told to shut up. The Prime Minister has said that the breaches, your breaches, amount to serious misconduct. Said one of the reasons that you had, was that you had been sharing the contents of meetings publicly. Do you accept that what you have done is 
serious misconduct? I think the serious breach of misconduct or the serious breach of trust here is, is from the Prime Minister and her office, as well as um, you know, all the people uh, who are there, part of the leadership team, uh, to make sure that every voice is heard. I wouldn't be here you know, doing this interview in front of you uh, if the Prime Minister's office or the Prime Minister herself or any of the other people put in place label Whip's office or the, the CEO of the Parliamentary Services had heard any of the concerns I had raised. Yeah, just, just going back to your actions though, do you understand that what you have done, breaching the trust of your colleagues, talking about things that happened in private meetings in public, do you acknowledge that that is serious misconduct? My point here is, um, you know, I have tried my best to get justice. I'm still being silenced. I wouldn't have to come out and prove any of this with, with these sort of things if uh, anybody had just listened to what I've been trying to say. Mm -hmm. And the question that people really need to be asking is, uh, you know, are, um, here is somebody who has raised serious concerns about another member of the caucus. Uh, nothing's been done about it. There's no independent investigation against Kieran McNulty. The Prime Minister ended up promoting this person, uh, and I uh, provided the evidence nine months ago, not just to any staff member, but to the Chief of Staff of the Prime Minister's office, in print, in person, but also in writing on the 18th of December, which was provided to the Prime Minister. So nothing came out of that. Where concerns have been raised about me, and I've been fully open about it, I have repeatedly asked for them to be investigated, and they haven't been investigated yeah. at all. Putting, putting aside the, the, the um the employment matters though. What you've done over the past week, do you, do you acknowledge that that? I think the question here is, you know, what, is, is the Prime Minister statement every day credible? Like every day when the Prime Minister is standing in front of the podium and saying that there are no issues here to see, are they credible? And the question New Zealanders really need to be asking is, what is the Prime Minister hiding that she doesn't want investigated? This is your first interview on these matters. Why do you want to speak now? Because, you know, I've tried every, every um, avenue. If you uh, look back to one and a half years, you know, I didn't start out doing interviews one and a half years ago. I went through the due process, whether it was the relationship manager, their boss, their boss, the deputy CEO, the CEO, uh, the multiple uh, people in the WIPS office, the WIPS themselves, um, the uh, chief of staff of the Prime Minister's office. So I have actually followed the due process and come to that. Uh, I've gone to the speaker as well. So I've been through uh, every office uh, that I could to seek justice. So, you know, I've come to this after spending one and a half years trying to get justice. It didn't just happen over one and a half days or one and a half weeks. It's taken quite a long time to get here. And you're fully aware that by doing this interview that you may leave the party with no other option than to expel you? And that's for the party to decide. You know, uh, as I said, you know, when I made claims ab about bullying, um, you know, it was for them to decide whether they want to investigate or not. I can only lay my point in my claims, and then it is the, the, the party's duties to, to look at those claims. I'm here now speaking up again because I'm being silenced once again after having gone through it for one and a half years. You've played us a recording that you made of a conversation you've had with a Labour MP that was in that secret meeting that took place on Monday night. When did your conversation with the MP take place? So um, after I found out um, that there was a, a secret meeting, um, well actually what happened is I was talking to the, the Chief Whip, um, Duncan Webb, mm -hmm. uh, and as, we, as you know he accidentally took a screenshot of my conversation that he was going to send to somebody else, uh, but ended up sending to me. And in that conversation there was a Zoom call going on uh, where I could see Calvin Davis. Uh, I looked at it and I thought, well, you know, there's some sort of meeting going on. I received a message uh, from a colleague saying, uh, after the meeting had ended, did you know there was a full caucus meeting except you uh, today at 8 o'clock? After that, we had a conversation uh, where the senior MP um, was able to describe uh, what happened uh, in the meeting. Uh, and there were some very serious concerns raised, uh, many of which the Prime Minister had refuted uh, the day before or you know even that afternoon that wouldn't happen. So the conversation you had with the MP took place before the formal caucus meeting where you were suspended? That's right and after the secret meeting. Okay. Why are you releasing the recording? Because I've, I've been left with no option you know uh, as I said uh, you know uh, if you just go back and look at just just this week don't even think about the last one and a half years we're talking about a Prime Minister who's saying she has no idea 
um, that I had raised these concerns, that I'd ever talked about it. Uh, and as I said before, you know, all the conversations about, you know, it shouldn't be OIA able, there should be no tracks left, uh, and you can't hold anybody accountable. So then I had to provide, uh, you know, this, that, you know, I had written to the Prime Minister's office, despite them saying, don't write to us, even though I'd met up with them and they didn't do anything about it. So we've come to a point where the Prime Minister every day does a stand up and says, well, you know, whatever this guy is saying is completely wrong. The question here should be that despite one and a half years of trying to get justice, nothing happened. Despite laying claims about Kieran McNulty, he was promoted. Despite now having to show screenshots reluctantly uh, from other colleagues who were very concerned about this person. And the same screenshots were passed to the chief of staff, not just any staff member, the chief of staff of Prime Minister's office. Nothing came about it, and Prime Minister still says there is no problem with bullying in the Labour Party. And so do other uh, senior ministers who have been saying there's no problem uh, with bullying in, in the Labour Party. Does the colleague know that you recorded their conversation? I'm not aware if they know or not. But, um, so probably not. But, but the question is, does the Prime Minister know that people in her caucus uh, are being bullied, have repeatedly been saying that, and she's ignoring their concerns. I mean, this is, you know, this is some really important question to ask. Yeah. The Prime Minister of a country refuses to agree that there is bullying within her own caucus. You've already lost the trust of a lot of your colleagues. This colleague probably would have thought that the conversation they were having with you was private. How can you expect people to trust you? The question here is about trust uh, uh, regarding the Prime Minister because you know she's the one who needs to be held accountable she's the one who's saying that i didn't know gaurav had been complaining about kieran mcnulty my office didn't know that gaurav was uh, complaining about kieran mcnulty even though the chief of staff had all the documents this is the same prime minister who is saying there is no problem in the caucus yeah. you know the other yeah, your colleagues will see what you're doing now is exactly the thing that they suspended you for so why are you doing it because the point here is that despite the prime minister saying during lunchtime that there was no predetermination the fact that there is no bullying in the Labour Party, there is a member, a senior member of Labour caucus, who has gone on record to say that there is bullying in the Labour Party, but also... I don't know if it's on record, if it's secretly recorded. Yeah. But, but, you know, but there are concerns that this person is genuinely sharing. And one of the concerns, uh, you know, if you hear the recording, is that the Prime Minister does not want an independent investigation from a QC or anybody else because there are other things that they don't want you to look at. And that's literally my point. You know, if you take out the politics, if you, you know, take me out for a bit of this conversation, my question is, we're trying to hold the Prime Minister of a country to account. Why would the Prime Minister, if I was working at McDonald's or, you know, any other workplace, by now there would be an investigation. But why is it the Prime Minister of the country does not want an investigation when serious claims have been laid uh, against uh, a senior member of her uh, ministry now. Why did the MP contact you? Were they trying to warn you, do you think? Yes, so they were trying to warn me and they said, you know, they were worried about the process that wasn't followed. Uh, multiple times during the conversation, they said um, the whole process was um, already decided, pre-mediated. Uh, they specifically mentioned the Prime Minister, they mentioned the leadership team, uh, and that, you know, they'd already made up their mind uh, and they agreed that the process wasn't fair. They, they said that I was brave. Um, they admired that I'd spoken up about it. Uh, and they specifically said uh, that Jacinda, Prime Minister, does not want any independent investigation because it could dig up other things. Let's go to some of this recording. On Monday night, before the caucus meeting, this MP said to you, this is predetermined, they know where they want to go. They told you a sanction was coming, it would either be suspension or expulsion. What was your reaction when you heard that on Monday night? You know, I was genuinely um, hurt by that because what I felt was, uh, you know, uh, even if you go back to Thursday when I wrote the article, my um, thinking was that despite having raised it for one and a half years, nobody listening to it, now that I've written uh, an op-ed, somebody would say, actually, let's investigate what this person is saying and, and see what the truth is. That didn't happen. Uh, when I was finally told that there was going to be a caucus meeting, I felt like, you know, I would finally have a chance to lay my side of the case and express it to all the caucus colleagues uh, what has been going on. And then I found out that the whole caucus minus one had met up, uh, had already discussed the issue uh, and predetermined it. And it's like, you know, going to a court, but the jury's already met up the night before and the only person there is not the accused. And the accused is the person who started by saying, I'm the victim here, right? So uh, the whole thing was already predetermined. And this is the Prime Minister who said on lunchtime that wasn't predetermined, that nothing was going on. 
And Do you think she misled the public when she said that? Definitely, because the meeting was called before she spoke about it. She was specifically asked about it, and she said it wasn't predetermined. And then, when um, the media, um, you know, started releasing information um, that they, it was predetermined, and released that screenshot of Calvin Davis speaking, um, they had to delay the press release by half an hour because then they were trying to figure out uh, what to say. Now that you know they've been caught in this, because they weren't going to tell you if you hadn't asked that there was a predetermined meeting the night before. Mm. The vote to suspend you was unanimous. What does that tell you? It just says that you know uh, nobody wants to speak up because people are scared, pe people are fearful uh, themselves. And how is it that you know multiple members of the caucus have uh, privately um, shown support, uh, but they can't speak up? And the reason is because the Prime Minister hasn't left any room for people to actually raise their concerns, uh, to talk about them, uh, and to actually give them a fair process. What people are looking at uh, within the caucus at the moment is, you know, we will be made an example like this guy if we actually spoke the truth. Mm. The MP during that phone call told you the formal caucus meeting would be brutal, that they were all just trying to have a stab, a crack, just to assassinate your character and paint you in a bad light. Is that why you never showed up to that formal caucus meeting? So one, as I said, you know, I was generally busy that day, but I did feel that, you know, obviously did, this did have an impact because, you know, if you're not going to get a fair trial, it's a kangaroo court in a banana republic. Uh, I could show up and, you know, the, the decision was already made uh, the night before. And, and this is exactly what's been happening, even if you look in the media, right? Like the, the, the political hacks are out there uh, talking about my character, what is this guy doing? But the question here is about the credibility of the Prime Minister of a country who um, goes to an Ivy League medical school and talks about transparency but hasn't shown any transparency. It's a simple black and white open shut case, right? Concerns were raised uh, for over one and a half years. Printed documents were provided to the Prime Minister's office, to the Chief of Staff, not just any person. And then that bully was promoted to becoming a minister. And it's not just one person. Multiple people raise these concerns. Multiple MPs have raised these concerns, and I have alerted them repeatedly about it. It's a very serious allegation. It's a very serious question. What is the Prime Minister trying to hide? The MP repeatedly suggested that you could resign from Labour, stay on as an independent MP. Do you think that they were deliberately trying to encourage you to fall on your sword? No, I don't think so. You know, this person was genuinely, um, you know, calling to let me know that uh, a due process had not been followed, um, that, you know, uh, there was already predetermination, uh, and to just make sure that I was aware of what had gone on. Cool. Back to the recording. The MP said that the Prime Minister, as you've said, um, doesn't want to have that open up into a QC investigation or anything that could put the gaze on any other issue or any other colleagues. They want it squarely on you. What does the MP mean by that? It means that there is more to it. And, you know, I've been saying this right from day one. Why would the Prime Minister not want to investigate uh, a bully against who many people had made uh, allegations? Uh, and uh, You think it's widespread? It, or the bullying is widespread. Uh, it, and it's not just one person bullying, there are multiple people bullying, you know, senior MPs, I'm sure bullying, uh, you know, junior MPs. But this specific person, Kieran McNulty, has been bullying a lot of people. There's a lot of evidence out there. But uh, a full investigation, an independent investigation, uh, will lead to more issues that the Labour Party doesn't want investigated. Not just bullying, but there's a lot more to it. So do you think they're afraid of what an investigation will find? Oh, definitely, yes. Uh, any public inquiry into this will, uh, you know, uh, will dig up more things. Would you be worried about what an investigation would find about you? No, not at all. I, if anything, you know, you can go back. I've, I must have had 100, 200 emails, in, uh, you know, back and forth uh, with all sorts of officers, and I've repeatedly said, you know, you need to investigate the claims against me because I'm able to easily disprove all of them. Many of them have even been fabricated, and when that was pointed, I was completely stonewalled and shut down, and they just wouldn't agree to go further. So you want them to bring in a QC? Oh, yes, definitely. On Tuesday, the Prime Minister said the reason that she hadn't called an inquiry was that it was her view there was a need for mediation between yourself and the whips rather than a determination. What do you make of that? Well, you know, it's just another way of shutting down uh, the whole thing and saying there's nothing to see here. But as I'm saying, this isn't just any party. Uh, this is a party that is now in government and something does not add up. This is the Prime Minister's office trying to cover something. This is the Prime Minister trying to cover something. And I'm saying this isn't just about bullying. There's a lot more here. Do you intend to participate in any kind of mediation? No. I want a public inquiry which will hold people to account. Because as we've seen up until now, it's just a kangaroo coat. For one and a half years, you know, the chief, uh, the CEO of Parliamentary Services, 
uh, is in bed with the Labour Party whips. You know, they just do whatever they want. There's no conversation. Uh, they just—it's a one-sided uh, monologue. Uh, you know, you talk to the Prime Minister's office. You just get told it shouldn't be OIA able. Don't give anything in writing, which I still ended up providing them in writing. And now we've got a Prime Minister who organises a secret meeting on uh, in the morning. In the afternoon, goes on record on TV, does a stand-up, and say there wasn't going to be a predetermined meeting. At night, there is a secret meeting, and now we've got a senior MP from the caucus saying it was predetermined, that, and the Prime Minister doesn't want an investigation. That MP said, those guys are bullies, no two ways around it. Who are they referring to? He's talking about the leadership of the Labour Party. So, Jacinda Ardern and Calvin Davis? Well, one, at least one of them is on TV every day saying there's nothing wrong. Okay. They also said, we've got to tow the party line, be a member of the team, not call out anything that would hurt, upset the bosses or the captain. Is that not just politics? No, it's not just politics because, you know, yes, I mean, politics is about, uh, you know, making a difference. Politics is about policy. Politics is about actually, uh, you know, making uh, people's voice heard. And how are we to, you know, make our constituents' voice heard if you have your own MP who is being repeatedly silenced and being told uh, that we don't want to hear anything uh, that you're saying? I mean, isn't it odd to you that an MP is saying, let's investigate him, as in me, against issues that have been raised, and let's investigate the person that I'm pointing the finger at, and the Prime Minister of the country says there's nothing to see here. Wouldn't you want to say, let's do a fair and square investigation, an independent investigation, and see what this is all about and clear everybody's name? But that's not the case here, because there is a lot more that the Prime Minister is trying to hide. So just to, just to be clear here, sorry, just to go back to your previous answer, you think that the Prime Minister is a bully? Well, you know, if, what is the definition of a bully? It's somebody who's coming up every day on TV, making up statements, and then next day gets caught up in the, in the problem that, you know, uh, statements that they said the day before that weren't true. And they're trying to put the pressure on me by silencing me instead of uh, talking about the person who's been bullying me. Well, the definition, let's go to an actual def definition of WorkSafe defines bullying as repeated, unreasonable behaviour directed towards a worker or a group of workers that can lead to physical or psychological harm. Is that what you've experienced? Oh, yes, yeah. One and a half years of that, and even in the last week, you can see that. Perpetuated by both Kieran McAnulty and the Prime Minister? Well, look, the Prime Minister's office has been aware for over nine months in writing uh, in print about the ease issues. They were involved in stopping me from hiring staff, even though I presented my case. They have not investigated the bully who's been bullying multiple people. If they're not uh, in association with the bully, then who is? Because aren't they supposed to be the highest authority in the country? Uh, not just from the whole country, but even from a parliamentary and uh, Labour Party stand uh, point of view. What WorkSafe says bullying is not is one-off rudeness or warning or disciplining workers in line with the business or undertakings code of conduct. With that in mind, do you still believe what's happened to you is bullying? Yeah, because this isn't about, I know the Labour Party and the Prime Minister is trying to make this about me speaking up, but you know, you have to understand the context in which I'm speaking up. I'm speaking up because the highest office in the country has refused for many, many months uh, to listen to genuine concerns here. And, you know, and these are concerns that are of interest uh, for public matter. You were specifically told by the sounds of things not, not to speak not, up? Not the first time. So on Monday, so on Thursday I wrote that article, but the Monday of that week, a few days before, uh, there was a whipped meeting where all of Class of 2020 was invited. Uh, it wasn't the first time we've had one of those meetings. Uh, and, you know, a political hack, Neil Jones, was invited uh, and uh, along with the Deputy Chief of Staff of Prime Minister's Office, uh, whips, uh, you know, Minister Aisha Verrill, uh, there were a lot of conversations. One of them was obviously, you know, shut up, don't talk about anything, uh, no, because we hadn't, not about this, but anything. You know, don't say anything for which the Prime Minister has to stand up and do a media stand up. Uh, but also, how not to uh, get an OIA um, issue. So how to talk to somebody without actually having any track record of it so nobody can track it down the road. And they've specifically been arranging hours within the staffing arrangement so that they don't have to answer OIAs, you say? Well, that's actually a specific question I did ask about, uh, you know, can the Prime Minister's office be oia uh, And I was told, uh, uh, you know, after first they raised their eyebrows and said, why? And when I sort of gave them an example, they said uh, the staffing arrangements are done in a way that, you know, some staff work you know, part-time for Labour Leader's office and part-time for Prime Minister's office. And when they want to prevent OIA, uh, they just sort of make it that this is a Labour leader's problem, this is not the Prime Minister's office problem, uh, and then they can get away with it. Are you comfortable with that? No, not at all. I mean, you know, this is what I'm saying. 
uh, there's so many issues here. Not only that a guy has been bullied, the guy has been trying to get justice and raise questions, but the whole thing is set up to uh, prevent any tracking of these issues being raised? That's a pretty serious allegation you've just made, that the Prime Minister's office is trying to avoid publicly releasing official information. Well, you tell me then. Like, you know, that's literally what's happening. And I had to write that email where I have specifically, clearly detailed that the Karen McNulty is bullying me. And they weren't happy after I wrote that because they did tell me before that, you know, nothing in writing, nothing on the phone, nothing by text come in, you know, it will be face to face and nothing came out of it. So I had to give it in writing. You've claimed that other Labour MPs have told you they've been bullied by the whips. Will you put on record who those MPs are? Look, I, I'm, I don't want to breach their privacy. Uh, it is already hard, uh, you know, to be at this point where I have to provide that sort of evidence. Uh, and, you know, Can you is, tell us maybe um, some of the positions that they hold? No, because, you know, they would obviously identify them, but, you know... Uh, or even if they're backbenchers? Uh, across the board. People across the board have reached so out ministers? to So ministers? People across the board have reached out to me and said that they've been bullied uh, and, and, and you know what you're doing is the right thing and good on you for standing up. One of the, message, the messages that you released from a colleague said, I fear I will have serious mental health issues staying here, bro. Is the Labour Party perpetuating a culture that breeds poor mental health? Oh, definitely. And, and this is exactly what I'm saying. You know, when I talked to the Chief of Staff of the Prime Minister's Office, my biggest concern was that, you know, this could turn into a really big issue. Like, you know, this person with uh, serious mental health issues uh, refused to do any EAP because they were so worried that, um, you know, the EAP people would let the WIPS office know uh, about their mental health and it would stop their progression uh, to becoming, uh, you know, to growing higher up uh, in the hierarchy. So people are so worried about even talking about their mental health uh, because uh, that's how it is. And one of the things we actually got told was, you know, that there is a, a black book uh, within the Labour Whip's office. Uh, it's locked. It gets passed on from one whip to another, one leadership to an another. It's got all your records, uh, everything, you know, uh, you've ever They're done. They're keeping files on you. Yes, and, and you don't have access to it. You don't know what's written about you. Uh, we won't show anything to you but we can write whatever we want. And, and I think that's a serious concern because they've made allegations about whether it's staffing or whatever it is, but I can't see what they've said and I've got no way to clear my name, which I've been repeatedly asking. Yeah, I want to pick up on those allegations for a moment. The Prime Minister said there's been employment issues in your office. Have you bullied any staff? No, I haven't, but you know, uh, I, I, I wasn't surprised when those three staff members came out. Uh, and as I've repeatedly said, those, those um, staffing allegations are very clear. Uh, many of them are very well fabricated and I've been able to prove to parliamentary services. You know, we're not talking about uh, me looking at somebody in a funny way or them looking at me and somebody in a funny way. These are timed, dated events uh, where, for example, people have been drunk, um, people have uh, wasted taxpayers' money. We've had complaints from constituents uh, about somebody serious. Um, there was uh, some real concerns there regarding staff. Well, a, a staff member said that you had them in tears, depressed, considering self-harm. Yes. What do you say to that? Yes, and, and that story, you know, I can give you the whole account of that story if you want to. My point here is, right, like the evidence I'm providing is very black and white. So it's not just, you know, they said, he said, she said. Like, you know, the job I'm doing right now, it, it, everything is very well documented where I am at a given point of a day. But also the job I was doing before as a doctor, you know, I keep very meticulous records. So you can completely refute the allegations? Every single one of them. And that's what I've been saying. You know, I've not been surprised by those, uh, by those three uh, allegation. One of the complaints that you made was around the misuse of money. Parliamentary Service um, has said that it was to do with a staffer travelling for an event. It was within the rules. What do you make of that? That's not, that wasn't the complaint. So, so, you know, when Parliamentary Services come around and say, well, actually, that's not... They're just, again, deflecting from it. Uh, and, but, but, you know, that's not even the, the question. The question is, I made these allegations to an independent agency of the Crown, Parliamentary Services, and guess what? They went and told them, the Labour Party, that this guy is complaining about you, and I got bullied more. How, when you say bullied, what exactly do you mean by bullied? How were you bullied? So when you say to an independent agency that we've got a member of parliament who is using their parliamentary money to, to get house shows done by a staff member, I don't think this is right for taxpayers, and then the parliamentary services get, goes and tells the Labour Party, and then the Labour Party whips get you in their room, they shout at you, they tell you that you shouldn't have done this, that the only way forward is for the Labour Party to continue to be in government, and the party should always be put in front of the, uh, in the country, and continuing to shout at you. I don't think I understand the implications of somebody repeatedly shouting at you and saying, why did you say this? How dare you say this? I can't believe you would say something like this.
So thinking back to that definition of bullying that we read you before from yeah. WorkSafe, you, you believe that this was bullying? Well, look, this is the whip who is worried, as, as I said in those comments, worried about uh, this affecting the party in the polls and the government. So they weren't just, you know, uh, talking to me politely and saying, oh, you know, you shouldn't have done that. They were literally shouting at me, not for one day or two days or three days. It just made things really bad because all they kept focusing on was that I was telling uh, the parliamentary services something that I shouldn't have, that I shouldn't be a whistleblower. Can you see how some people wouldn't consider this bullying, that they'd consider it just part of the political game? Really? I mean, you know, is this what we expect of our politicians now? That somebody is, you know, uh, raising concerns about taxpayers' money, uh, that this person's cover is blown by the independent agency, and the, the, the party or the whips then go on to... Uh, actually, you know, uh, go and uh, tell this person off continuously and keep bullying them. Mm. I mean, I don't think we should expect that from any politician, any party. Did you ask Parliamentary Service to keep your identity secret? Yes, I did. And you know, what's funny is I have repeatedly asked for an investigation just on that matter alone. What has been done about it? Nothing. Even on Thursday, this last Thursday when I read the, uh, wrote the op-ed, and I repeatedly said that problem alone has caused me so much grief because... Uh, the Labour Party and the Whips just kept coming back to me and saying, we can't believe you did this, and they kept bullying me. And why has, wasn't anything done about it? I mean, where is the accountability of parliamentary services in all of this? And again, you know, the example here now for rest of staff members, for rest of MPs, is that you can waste money from the taxpayer's pocket and you don't have to speak about it, and if you do speak about it, you will be made uh, the problem. Mm. You have five questions that you'd like to be answered. Actually, I they? do have five questions, and if you don't mind, I'm just going to read them out to you. I just wrote them in case I forgot. So the first question is, right, what is the Prime Minister hiding that she doesn't want an investigation? I've said this repeatedly. There's more to it. Uh, in any other uh, employment setting, the, uh, the, the CEO or the company chair would in, want to investigate. The second question is, why don't they investigate Gaurav Sharma about staffing issues he has repeatedly asked for so that he can get a fair trial? I've been saying, if anybody's made claims against me, let's do a fair investigation because I can prove to you black and white what's happened. Point three, why did the independent parliamentary services share with the Labour Party uh, the details about my whistleblowing about uh, parliamentary misuse of fund? The fourth one is despite screenshots now coming out which show that you know Labour Party caucus members have been bullied by Kieran McNulty, why would the Prime Minister not do an investigation against this person who's, um, she's now gone on to um, promote. She's promoted him. In December, I gave all the evidence. Why would uh, the Prime Minister not investigate Kieran McNulty? Why wasn't it done then? And now, when all the evidence is being provided, why isn't she ready to do it now? And then finally, when the Prime Minister said that I would get a fair trial uh, in the caucus meeting, uh, why was she lying? Because she was the one who organised the meeting that morning, a pre-meeting, uh, for that night. Uh, and as we now hear, uh, everything was already decided. Uh, but also she doesn't want an independent investigation because there's a lot more to it. You were a GP. You gave that up for politics. Why did you want to stand for the Labour Party? Because I believed uh, in the values you know, they talked about. I believe in the values that the Prime Minister talks about at one o'clock, talking about kindness. When she talks about at Ivy League uh, University, about transparency. Uh, you know, when, when she talks about it at, at any conference. And, and I genuinely believe that the values... Uh, which are written on paper, are the values that they actually stood by. So why not sit back, shut up, try and salvage your political career and make something of your opportunity in Parliament? But this is not about the political career, right? Like, I gave up a, a, a good career in general practice or in, in medicine to come and do this because I do want to make a difference and I want to help change the system for the better. This isn't just about me. This is about other MPs who are being bullied. This is about other staff who are being bullied. And this is also an example for every other workplace where if your boss is uh, powerful enough, they can shut you down uh, anyhow and ha there, there has to be no accountability at all. You've already been suspended by the party. Speaking out now, will likely, the party will likely expel you. Are you prepared for that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, what, I, what I'm repeatedly asking is a fair trial uh, and that's what I'm focused on. So it's a matter of principle for you? It is a matter of principle. If the party expels you, do you want to stay on as an independent MP for Hamilton West outside of the Labour Party? Well, look, I want to serve my constituents as best as I can. What about if the Prime Minister writes to the Speaker asking for you to be removed from Parliament under the Walker jumping legislation? Would you contest a forced by-election? Look, I haven't even thought that far. Look, I'm, I'm repeatedly asking for a fair trial here. 
uh, for myself as an elected member of uh, you know people of Hamilton West constituents uh, who have put the faith in the Prime Minister and the party as much as I have. The Prime Minister has said that you're on your final warning. Doing what you've done today, you've essentially hit the nuclear button. Do you think you're going to regret this? No, why should I regret it? Um, you know, after I read the, wrote the op-ed, uh, a, a list member was sent to me on Thursday to, to talk to me. And basically I was told that, you know, do you want to leave from the basement door? Do you want to leave quietly? Do you want to put your head down and get on with it? Do you want the Prime Minister's press secretary to write, uh, uh, you know, talk you through how to turn it around and say it's all an internal party matter? And I said at that time too, but why should I be the one hiding my face? I haven't done anything wrong. I'm the one who's uh, claiming that I've been bullied. So you're not going down without a fight? No. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, look, I just want a fair trial. Uh, and, and it's not just about me. It's about a lot of people out there who have contacted me and said it's happened in their workplace as well. And, and their bosses have gotten away with it. Um, you know, because there's never been any accountability. But also for staff members, you know, if they are making any complaints, um, you know, they should get a fair trial too. In any workplace, yes, there will be issues with bullying both ways. But the point is, you know, who is investigating? Who is making sure that the name has been cleared for both parties? Uh, and that's definitely not happening in Parliament. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.